Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm David Kerr from Lansing in Michigan, and these are your latest news headlines from around the world. Nigeria may have the highest rate of Catholics attending Mass worldwide. That's according to a news survey by the US-based Centre for Applied Research in the Apostolate of Georgetown University. When asked how often do you attend religious services these days, aside from weddings, funerals and christenings, 94% of self-identified Catholics in Nigeria who participated in the study indicated that they regularly attend Mass. Among those asked, 73% identified Adult Catholics in Kenya went to Mass regularly and 69% in Lebanon attend Mass once a week or more frequently. The next set of countries where half or more Catholics attend Mass every week includes the Philippines at 56%, Colombia at 54%, Poland at 52% and Ecuador at 50%. The lowest levels of weekly mass attendance were observed in Lithuania, where it was only 16%, Germany and Canada at 14%, Latvia and Switzerland at 11%, Brazil and France at 8%, and the Netherlands at 7%. The study also found that practicing Catholics are most prevalent in regions with lower wealth per capita. Meanwhile, the Christian Association of Nigeria has warned that humanitarian disasters may occur if the current security issues in the country are not comprehensively addressed. In the latest attack in the country, a Catholic priest was burned to death on Sunday in Mina Diocese. That was Father Isaac Achi of St. Peter and Paul's Church in Kafin Koro. He was killed when his presbytery was torched by bandits. May he rest in peace. Meanwhile, the US government's international religious freedom watchdog has urged the US State Department to designate Nigeria a country of particular concern. It's also suggested appointing a special envoy for Nigeria and the Lake Chad Basin in light of the ongoing persecution of Christians. Every war results in a setback for humanity. That was the message of Pope Francis this week. The Holy Father was addressing members of the European Institute of International Studies, which is based in the Spanish city of Salamanca, Gathered in Rome, the Pope said that the peace amongst men is a vital good for which we must labour passionately and fervently entreat God. He also remarked that peace is a struggle because it is not merely based on balances of power or on ignoring the rightful aspirations of the less privileged, but rather is an essential good for which we must work hard. Through prayer and work, he said, we must try to generate solutions. Meanwhile, just days after the US and Germany pledged to give tanks to Ukraine, Russia has intensified its missile attacks on the infrastructure of the war-torn nation, unleashing a barrage of missiles on Thursday. There were reports that 35 structures were hit across multiple locations, resulting in 11 deaths and a further 11 injuries. The continuous Russian assault took down power plants, leaving millions of Ukrainians in the dark. Well, that comes just days after President Joe Biden announced that the US will be sending 31 Abraham tanks to Ukraine. Meanwhile, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz also confirmed his country would supply more than 100 Leopard 2 tanks. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said the deliveries of the tanks are crucial to winning the war. The Spanish authorities have revealed that a Moroccan man arrested in connection with the killing of a parish sacristan had been facing deportation. The terror attack happened on Wednesday when a man armed with a machete entered two churches in the southern city of Algeciras and killed a sacristan before injuring a priest in a nearby church. A 25-year-old man was disarmed and arrested soon after. The suspect will now be sent to the capital city of Spain, Madrid, to appear before the High Court. The authorities say the suspect was due to be deported in June, as he was in the country illegally. They also say he has no criminal or terrorism-related convictions, either in Spain or in other countries, and was not under surveillance. However, he had been deported from the British territory of Gibraltar in 2019 for immigration offences. The bishops of Minnesota and the US are urging lawmakers to reject a bill that seeks to codify the right to abortion in the state constitution. The Protect Reproductive Options Act narrowly passed the State House of Representatives on January the 19th with a vote of 69 to 65. Abortion is already legal throughout pregnancy in Minnesota for the majority of causes. In response, the bishops say that every child should be welcomed in life and protected in law.
The United States has placed sanctions on 10 more Iranian citizens and another Iranian company in response to the Iranian government's recent violations of human rights. The move from the US follows similar actions by the United Kingdom and the European Union. The sanctions will affect the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Cooperative Foundation, five of its board members, Iran's Deputy Minister of Intelligence and Security, and four top Revolutionary Guard commanders in Iran. All have been designated as violating human rights by the Office of Foreign Assets Controls of the US Department of the Treasury. A court in Colorado has ruled against a Christian baker who declined to make a cake that contradicts his religious beliefs. In 2018, Jack Phillips of Masterpiece Cake Shop in Lakewood won a case at the US Supreme Court concerning his refusal to make a wedding cake for a so-called same-sex marriage. Now Mr Phillips faces a civil lawsuit for declining to make a cake celebrating a so-called gender transition of a man by the name of Autumn Scardina who claims to identify as a woman. On Thursday, a three-judge panel at the Colorado Court of Appeals sided with Mr Scardina. Mr Phillips is represented by the Alliance Defending Freedom legal group, which will now appeal the case to the Colorado Supreme Court. Several of the Muslim Uyghur camps in China's Xinjiang province have been turned into official prisons, with detainees there receiving lengthy prison sentences. That's according to the US magazine Foreign Affairs. Meanwhile, many inmates have reportedly been moved from camps to factories in Xinjiang or other parts of China, also according to Foreign Affairs. Elsewhere, some Uyghur families living overseas claim that their kin is still in their country, but they are being held under house detention. The magazine depicts the Muslim-majority province as witnessing a silent genocide at the hands of the Communist Party of China, which has outlawed the use of the Uyghur language and the practice of Islam. Beijing is also accused of destroying mosques, shrines and cemeteries and rewriting history to downplay Uyghur culture and its distinction from Chinese culture. A school district in Mississippi has agreed to modify a rule prohibiting the expression of political or religious views which had prevented a third grade student from donning a face mask bearing the words Jesus loves me. Because of the face mask's Christian message, the Simpson County School District forbade young Lydia Booth from wearing it during the coronavirus outbreak. As part of a settlement agreement ending the federal lawsuit, the school district has reversed its decision and will now permit the child to wear her Jesus loves me face mask. The outcome was announced on Wednesday by the Alliance Defending Freedom, uh, a legal non-profit that specialises in cases involving religious freedom and which represented Miss Booth. Finally, the annual Texas Rally for Life will take place on the afternoon of Saturday, January the 28th in the capital city of Austin. The event is expected to draw tens of thousands of pro-life supporters from all around the state. This event is celebrating the end of the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling which legalised abortion across the country. It was struck down by the US Supreme Court last year. Organisers of Saturday's rally are also requesting that participants bring a box of diapers to aid Texas women and newborns. They intend to create a mountain of diapers that will be sent to pregnancy centres all around the state. Speakers include pro-life leaders from across Texas, including Governor Greg Abbott and Bishop Joe Vasquez of the Diocese of Austin. Well, that's your latest headlines for now. Do join us for more tomorrow. You can also join us at swnews.org for news updates. Shalom.